What's up, taters? This is Tree from TreeOfLogic.com, and look who I have with me. I have Desiree from Just Thinking Out Loud. What's up, girl? Hi, Tree. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm really excited to talk with you. I am more excited to talk to you, you know, saying I, I really can't wait for us to just Basically, it's 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 rare that I find uh, someone that I can look on the internet and go, I would like to have a nice long conversation with her. And uh, I'm glad that we have this opportunity to uh, do that. Now, before we jump into some juicy topics, let, let's get to know you a little better. So I, I noticed you for the first time on YouTube when you did a video, I think the video is called, uh, uh, fascinated and horrified. It was right. It was in relations to race, realism, race and IQ. You was driving your car. And that's when I, I saw your channel and I checked out a couple of your other videos. I'm like, Oh, she's really cool. I really like her. Now, uh, before we even talk about that content, when did you start your YouTube channel? I started it in March. I think March 14. <laughs> I think okay. I can remember the exact date of this year. Of 2017, yes. Oh, oh, you a baby. You just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I am. Yeah. What, what made you start your YouTube channel? Well, my first channel was my art channel. Okay. Um, so that's why I actually came on YouTube. And that was a bigger hurdle for me. Uh, maybe just as big, but that was also a big hurdle for me. Just coming on YouTube and putting my face out there and putting content and like wondering how it would be received. And that's pretty small, very, very small, that channel. But uh -huh. then um, I also thought that I wanted to talk about intellectual stuff and things that I was thinking about uh, in my life. And I had moved to the city um, maybe like almost a full year at that point. Uh -huh. And I was encountering for the first time really a lot of um, black Americans and not just like in passing because I would see them because I used to live upstate. I, uh, I'm from Jamaica and I... I came to the U.S. Um, through college, and I had a couple of friends who were black in college, too, but most of them were Caribbean, or I made a few African friends also. Um, but I never really spoke in depth to a lot of the black Americans, and then I was really uh, interacting with them more moving to the city. And um, I had a couple of experiences that really weirded me out and uh, really bothered me. And I also... Like I what? Well, I talk about it in my very first video, but uh, the most significant ones were I was working, uh, I don't want to say which job, but I was working a job um, that's like a pretty low income kind of job. It was just, I was just trying to find work, uh, sort of something temporary. And I had mentioned that I had been living upstate. And um, actually, that wasn't the first thing. The first thing was the people I was working with seemed like put off by me and they would make these comments like why am I acting so proper which I which I really can be like I don't get very no, comfortable no 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 you're acting civilized you don't act hood <laughs> you don't act don't ghetto so that makes you act proper <laughs> Oh yeah, God. but I mean, like, even in, in Jamaica, like, I would speak, like, proper English until I'm, like, very comfortable with someone, and then I would, like, relax that a little bit. But that's just how you interact with someone who you don't know. Like, that's, you, you're polite and whatever. And um, a couple guys, they were just really, they just made these sort of snide remarks about my behavior. Like, it wasn't in a nice way. It wasn't in a surprise way. It was in a snide kind of way. Mm. And then... um they had like asked me about myself and where I was from. And uh, I said that I was living upstate. And then one of them was like, oh, so you were up with the slave masters. And I was, I was so shocked. Like I, I was just so shocked. I was like, welcome no, I to America. But I was really shocked. That that. Like, I, I was. And, um, and that the guy beside him, because there was another guy too, he just, he wasn't, he was just like nonplus. He was like, oh, this is just like a, a regular conversation. And so I never confronted them, to be honest. <laughs> I was just like, you, you just did a good thing. Me. Don't confront them. You did, you did right. <laughs> Don't do that. You just, you just, you got to let the ignorance just flow by you like water. You know what I'm saying? But, um, I, but I felt very offended on behalf of like a lot of the people that I knew and had made friends with. And um, and then that's really how I, I entered that world. And also, um, I had discovered 
um, <clears throat> this was right as I started my channel, but I was a listener. I don't listen to him as much anymore, but I used to listen to uh, Freedom in Radio with Stefan Molyneux, and he brought up the race and IQ stuff. And uh, I, I've said this before on my channel, but I stopped listening to him for a while after that. And at the point where I started my channel, I hadn't done that research yet. It was like right as I was starting, I was like, I had like um, bookmarked a couple of stuff to read, but I hadn't actually done it yet. Yeah. Uh, so I just felt like I had a lot on my chest. You don't have to watch his channel. I don't, I don't want, I'm no. not subscribed to him. I can't watch him. I don't really care too much for Stephen Molyneux. So uh, there are so many other uh, venues to actually get that information from. So it's, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. We don't need to talk about it, but I don't really like the direction he's going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, um, I would say that, and also the political climate, there were, there was, I had a friend um, who, she was actually my friend from Jamaica, but she had an uncle, I don't want to give too much away, who lived in the U.S., and I was hanging out with her, and uh, her relative, he made, he really hates Trump, which is fine, but he made this comment that was like, any minority who supports Trump should be shot. Like, like he said it so seriously, and, and that too, like the political intolerance, that was also driving me crazy. And like the fact that uh, because you were a minority, like you're supposed to think a certain way. So just these little things kind of all were piling on me. And I felt like, I feel like I have a moral <clears throat> obligation to like make the world the place I want it to be. Yeah. And I needed a lot that people were being like this. I was like, I want to speak out against this stuff. Yeah. But I really came on you from my art channel, but then all this other stuff was going on and I just started to talk. How's the reception uh, since been, since then, since starting your videos, have been for you on your channel? I think it's been really well. Um, I'd say are a lot of uh, there are a lot of like negative comments from, I guess, <clears throat> people who are not very nice. <laughs> I want to get that. Them. That's how that's how it is on uh, um that's how it is on on uh, on YouTube, especially if you're black. Um, you're going to catch it from all races, the, and, yeah, yeah. and uh, especially from our own. I so, would say so too. Yeah. Like I, it's more, there's definitely like, you know, regular, like mostly white, I would say racist people. But I think for, for the most part, like the ones that are the nastiest in my personal exactly. opinion are from other black people, which is so I'm getting used to it, but uh, that was also very strange to me oh, to honey, get. You, you be look. See, the <laughs> long you stay on YouTube, the mon numb you are. I mean, I've been called the coon and Uncle Tom so much. I think it's my middle name. It it has no effect on me whatsoever. I just don't even. Care yeah, anymore. yeah. I've, I've definitely <clears throat> gotten a lot of that. I'm just like, just be a. Well, that's just me, but I, I just feel like you should be a nice person and try to understand other people's <laughs> viewpoints, even though I understand. A lot of the world isn't like that. Well, see, that um, that also <laughs> kind of proves the race and IQ thing for me. It's just that, you know, if because by, by the way, and I just want to say on all fairness, you have some ignorant low IQ whites just like you do blacks. And mm -hmm. you can always tell who's who by the things that they say to you and how they say it and the stupid things That's they true. do say. Yeah. So it's it's like it to me it makes me realize like oh <laughs> you're on this end of the bell curve. Oh no no you on this end of the so it's it, it's it's so it's so refreshing uh to know this information to the point where I actually can it gives me an understanding of who I'm dealing with because if you are if you are actually of the lower end of the bell curve, I don't even try to have a decent conversation with you because you're just gonna start calling me names. You mm -hmm. you're gonna ignore facts and things like that. You don't even want to you don't even want to entertain uh, the notion that what I'm saying is true. You don't even want to fact check me. And if you do get the facts and you realize I'm right, you deny the science or you deny. Uh, the facts and you just believe what you want to believe because it feels good to believe a lie yeah. over the truth. I agree with that. I do kind of want to push back a little bit because um, I'm sorry for all the people who may be insulted, but <laughs> I traveled a lot growing up in Jamaica. Um, not a lot, but my parents, my mom was from the other end of the island. She grew up very rural. She grew up pretty poor um, for Jamaican standards. And we used to visit there a lot. <clears throat> and then also some of the work I did it, it involved walking around and 
talking to people and like interviewing them and asking them questions. And these are people from all walks of life. And um, just little things like that, along with my regular life in Jamaica. And after learning about this IQ stuff, a lot of that started to make more sense to me. Just like the, I guess, intelligence of people. And I feel really bad saying that. But why? Like, I can, why? I, why? I, okay, so I'm, I, I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want to interrupt you, but please tell me why does that make you feel bad? Please explain. I'm so interested in that. Seriously. Okay, I really want to okay. know. Okay. Because I feel like intelligence is something that people place a lot of worth and value on. And I don't want people to feel as if because I can recognize that there are different levels of intelligence, which I think there are. And I, I can see that even for people who I know are smarter than me, like I can I can tell. But I don't want them to think that that makes them lose value otherwise. Like that that really bothers me. So I would say that's why. Um, okay, we'll talk. That, I'll, 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 that <laughs> makes sense, but I, but I okay. just I wanted to know why. I don't want to um, respond to that. I want I just I just wanted to know why because I I needed okay. to know right then and there. And then I'm gonna let you go ahead and finish what you were saying. So um, okay. go ahead and proceed. Um, I think I was saying that uh, the world made a lot more sense to me. You were talking about the people making mean comments, but I would say that I really think that there is a cultural thing because. For example, people calling you or me coons or Uncle Toms or or the N word or whatever, um, like that's very distinct to the the U.S. So I'm the reason I brought up the Jamaica thing is because I would be interacting with these people and um, I think they're nicer. Like even when you, they're not maybe as smart, like I think that the way you are raised is important too, and it's not just. You're, you're, you call someone names and you're mean and whatever because you're, you have a lower IQ. I went to Jamaica. Um, actually, I love the Caribbeans. And um, uh, I made a mistake. I've been to Jamaica twice. I made a mistake of going to um, Ocho Rios <laughs> first. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned the second time to not go to any touristy place. I was very miserable at the tourist place. Okay. And um, the second time I came, to, because honey, I'm, I'm going to tell you why I was miserable. I came there two years after Stella Got Her Groove Back came out. Okay, I don't so, know that. Oh, you don't know the movie? Okay. Oh, the, wait, yes, I do. Yeah, it's, it, about, it's, about, it's about the black woman who came to Jamaica, got herself a young Jamaican man. Okay, no, I don't know this. And, <laughs> and she, because she made a lot of money, he took care of her, she took care of her him and they got married and live happily ever. And it's based upon a true story. Come find out that the Jamaican man is gay and he got a divorce and got alimony from her. It's actually... <laughs> it's, <laughs> I'm, really interesting. I, I, I'm telling you, this, the story is wild. So a lot, mm. of, a, a lot of women were coming to Jamaica to buy uh, men. I didn't for, know of that. Mm. Yeah, but this is was like I said. This is this is this is why going to Ocho Rios was the worst thing I could have done. I'm I'm going to support your statement about the nice the nice people in Jamaica because this time I went to a village that was not too far. It was like 30 minutes away from the grill. As a matter of fact, I was staying with Jamaican people. Oh my God, they were so oh they were so <laughs> wonderful and. It was just the most friendliest people and they hug and they talk to you. They make jokes and everything like that. And, and mm. what I want to say in, 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 in just to make you understand that it's nothing personal with the, the race and IQ. Absolutely. These beautiful people. And I met a lot of Rastafarians, of course, they didn't like my hair because they didn't like the fact that I didn't have free flowing uh, uh, dreads. Uh, Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I know. And just to show you how I was deep into the deep into yeah. the uh, uh, area, um, but it was it was a loving, nurturing, very understanding community that I was in. But I knew not to venture out into other thought provoking conversations that I understood that they couldn't talk about. Mm -hmm. So you son, so it was not as if. I believe that that the people I was talking to were because they are low IQ means that they're angry and mean and they're hateful and spiteful. Absolutely not. And I'm not saying that the people I was talking to was low IQ. As a matter of fact, I, I ran into an elder who blew my mind because 
and I talked to him for two hours straight because we were talking on a much intellectual level that I couldn't talk to the other locals with. And so, and he was still nice and he was still wonderful. He offered me some jerk chicken and I was like, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm vegan. And I, I you know, and he's, so he basically made oh, you're me a, vegan. Okay. yeah, he I made, didn't know that. yeah, he, I, 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 in a plant-based diet. And so he made me a, a, a different type of plate from some uh, native uh, fruit there. And okay. I know you can relate to this when I tell you this, but talking to people who you having a good time with is different than talking to someone who not only stimula stimulate your intellect, but you actually learn something from that person. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I do. I know what you're talking about. And actually, I, um, I think that, um, well, the school I went to was, uh, it was basically the top school in terms of grades in the country. So I was always surrounded by that. Um, so this is a different thing, but I, I'm never, I have never been short of very smart black people <laughs> in my life. You are so lucky. <laughs> like other people too. <laughs> but I, I do think that, um, I've definitely experienced that, like wanting to find that and having people around and you, you realize you can't have that and it's very boring. Um, yeah. I've definitely been in that situation before. Um, so I know what you're talking about. Like it, you, sometimes you long, you long to like work your brain. And, yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 you, you ha you, to me, you know, my, my body uh, needs to be fed nutrients from food, but my mind needs to be fed knowledge. And in our community, you know, saying this is something either it's taken for granted or it's not that popular. And I, I, the reason why it was so important for me to know why you felt bad for people who are lower IQ, I, I wanted you to know that it's, it's nothing racist or a bigot or anything. They're not going to be, now you may think they're going to be treated badly, but I don't see that. Um, I, I, and, and you, and you are actually, and I'm, you know, to, for use for a better word, you are very fortunate to be around people who you can have an intellectual or an intelligent conversation with, uh, those who are smart and those who you can actually have, even if you're disagreeing, it yeah. still, it still will be an enlightening converse, an enlightening conversation. I don't know how that felt as a, as a little girl. I was shunned. I, I was punished for asking questions. Um, as a mm -hmm. matter of fact, it, 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 it's something that is not when you're in the black community, people who the black children who are studious are actually mocked. They're ridiculed. They're teased. They're outcast. They're accused of being white. And in the black community here in America, uh, a criminal who just got out of jail for f five years is more celebrated than a black man who has graduated from college uh, from the honor roll. <laughs> you know, that's horrible. <laughs> but that's how it is. And so when I listen to you, your mm. compassion, I I I wanted to let you know that it's not whites doing this to us. It's, and I'm only speaking to here in the black in, in America. It's not whites doing that to us. It's us doing that to us. And, uh, and I do travel the world too. And I see the, I, I see similarities, uh, that, that I'm so thankful for my knowledge in race and IQ and race realism. Uh, and I said this to Jared Taylor, it was the piece of the puzzle. Uh, thanks mm. to him. I, I got that missing piece that, that made everything, it, it made everything made sense because of that missing piece that he gave me. I now look at the, look at the worldwide and, and, and when I see anyone of African descent and I, I don't automatically assume anything until I talk. Now and that's different. Now, if I see a black man with his pants below his butt and he has a big old shirt on and, and, and a lot of grill and a lot of gold in his mouth. Automatically, I'm going to go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just going to racial profile and realize like, 
low IQ. I don't want to have anything to do with that. Same thing with. And is I, that actually racially profiling though? Because I feel like you're you're seeing other markers, like you're talking about the pants and the shirt. Oh yeah, you're like you know, like it's not just. I mean, I guess you have a. You think it might be possible, but there's more to it than just the race of the person. Oh yeah, let me let me justify the reason why I say that's racial profiling <laughs> because I've never had an intelligent conversation with these type of men. I've always noticed these type of men will always disrespect me as a woman. I noticed that mm -hmm. as a police officer, these are the type of men I always was running after, and th and I love the fact that they wear their pants half off their butt because it was easy for tell. them to catch them. It was easy <laughs> yeah. for them to catch them when they would run, when they would do, when they would break the law and they would run from the police. I, I could catch them easily because see, when when you're a police officer, you have this, you have this uh, bulletproof vest and you have all this gear wrapped around your your waist. And you 20 pounds, by the way, 20 to 25 pounds of gear wrapped around your waist, and you're in polyester pants and these daggone boots. And you trying to chase uh -huh. after somebody who's in tennis shoes. So when they wear their pants half off their butt, that gives me an advantage to catch them. And I, I've kept, I have <laughs> yeah. not had one get away from me yet. So it's like I appreciate. So that's why I say I racially profile them because I have not had an intelligent conversation, nor have I had a good experience with such a black man who dressed this way. Also, let me help you out because I, I, I don't want you to think I'm beating up on our people. I okay. never had that experience with white men either who dress like that. So when white mm. men who, cause it, he ain't the only one, you have some white people who are, who are influential by the black culture like that here in America. And they too wear their clothes, their pants half off their ass and, and uh, excuse me, off their butt and wear big clothes and everything like that. They too is dumber than a bag of hammers. So I, I noticed that, uh, certain people of a certain intellect dressed the same. It's really weird. I, I find it really a little bit odd. Like I don't, well, obviously I wouldn't get it because I'm not them, but like, I, I, I don't, I don't really understand like, why do you have to buy into that sort of mentality? And I guess it's because it's the only thing you know. And like, I was raised a certain way because of my community and my parents. So I guess they were raised a certain way. So like, that's who they are, and I guess that's what they're proud of, and you know. But they but don't. But they also weird. don't <laughs> want to know any any different. You know, I they, this is the reason why people were afraid to debate me in reference to the race realism thing, because here you have a. They kept saying that black people can't help the condition that they're in. Because I hate that. <laughs> of the environment. Yeah, exactly. But see, this I is, really this, hate that mentality. This, but see, that's a mm. racist mentality. They are saying that we <laughs> as black people are inferior, okay, that we have to be held at low, lower standards because yeah. we're savages to the point where we don't understand the law. We don't know how to comprehend right and wrong. Well, yeah. You know, so, and this is, yeah. this, this is why I that wanted really to go bothers after them. Like, like, that bothers me a lot. Like, I've noticed that. It's like, I don't know, like, it's like there are always these like excuses and excuses for people who are just supposed to be citizens in your society, but no, they're like these special citizens that get 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 away with certain things, and and I, I can see how it could come from a good place, but it's also sort of sickening. Like it sickens me that they can't just be, I don't know, like told to be the best that they can be, and that their best is not the same as the highest that it could possibly be. That really really bothers me about how like the social atmosphere of uh, the u.s and and this is the reason uh when i was when i was looking at your video when you were you said to the point that you didn't want people to take the science of race and iq and use it against black people and i and in my head i said it's been already done that's what to me the great society is an ex is, is there's many more yeah. before that one but the but uh johnson's great society the war on poverty is an exact is an ex a primary example of how white people have taken this science and by the way they're white democrats i've never seen any white republicans do any of this but there's always white democrats white liberals who take this information and they actually exploit black people and use it against them because affirmative action should I, not I exist. Like <laughs> oh, so you don't agree. Okay. You don't agree. No, with no, no, no. I, I don't like affirmative action. Okay. Like I'm agreeing with what, everything you're saying about yeah. the war of poverty and 
I I think it's ludicrous. I right. I, I I um like like if, if I remember going to school, you know, you're competing, so not everybody does well. But nobody told me that I couldn't. Nobody told me that like because of uh, everybody told me to try and like not to try for hair, to try for like everybody, like in to try against all the people in my year or in my class, uh, many of whom were not black. They usually were mixed or there are lots of Asians, uh, like Indians or Chinese. So it was like, I don't know. It, it, I guess I, I, had, I would have to come back to the point of um, sort of growing up in a society that was not actually colorblind, but compared to the U.S., kind of colorblind. And there was no separation. Like, you guys are special, but not in a good way. And we're trying to help you up, but in helping you up, we're telling you that you can't compete yes. with these people. And it's also, you, can't, you also can't interact with those other people in a good way. If... Um, Maybe you, you don't get it intellectually, but I think some part of you knows that you're being told that you're not as good as, for whatever reason. It could be because of your environment or it could be because of something innate. But they're telling you that you can't bring yourself up to their level. And again, I don't think it has to be something that you understand intellectually, but I, I think that people get that. And I don't see how you can like make friends with that other group or that other person. Um, properly, like I don't see how you can interact socially on an equal playing field or in a way that you feel comfortable knowing that in the back of your head. When you, when, when you and I understand, we do understand race and IQ. When you understand the science, you see the manipulation that's being um, performed on various races. You just see it. It's just oh, yeah. obvious. It's just freaking obvious. And I get very angry with blacks who deny the science because, and I'm just going to be mean. I'm just going to say this because this is how I feel. I believe that the ones who deny it flat out are just the ones who are on the lower end of the bell curve who have the low IQ because they don't want to believe that they are less intelligent and are, are, are on the dumb side. Because how can you see if you just look at the behavior of different types of races? And, and, and it doesn't mean that, that we are inferior as blacks. I mean... Honey, I am a gym rat. Now, I haven't been to the gym like I normally <laughs> I should go to, but 25% uh, of the, the people in my gym are black. And if you just actually just look at the strength and uh, uh, the muscle bellies of the black men versus the white men and how, how they just take for granted how strong they are, how physically dominant they are. I mean... As a abnormally tall woman, I acknowledge that I have different physical um, uh, advantages than other races. Okay, I, I but I don't say that I'm better than any other race. And so, what I want Black people to understand is that just because a certain race have a higher uh, IQ uh, rating doesn't make them better than you. OK, it's not mm -hmm. about who's better than who. Now, when a particular race talk, talk about that they are the superior race, that's when I step in and go, no, hell, you're not. OK, uh, because we all have disadvantages and advantages. And if you concentrate on strengthening your disadvantages and managing your advantages, you should be a well-rounded person. But because blacks uh, That's a good part. On on an average, are have low self esteem because uh, because of these hashtag not all white liberals are actually cuddling them and telling them that they are special and it's the white man's fault and that they are oppressed. And when I look at the 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 ignorance that is expelled by not only b people like Black Lives Matter and a lot of these pro black groups. I get angry when they feed into the ignorance that has actually um, 
be implemented about from white people who know about this science and know how to manipulate black people to work in their favor. There's no excuse for 90% of the black community to vote Democrat today. I it's, find it's, that so weird. <laughs> race and IQ, so that's what I'm saying. Race and, it's, it's, hold on, it's not I all... find it so strange, like 90%, like that's so odd. <laughs> it's it's you know, two reasons, it's two natural. reasons why they do that. It's because of the race and IQ thing, and it's because of tribalism. A lot of people got mad at Rage's video, but I'm saying, blacks are tribal. What the hell are you talking about? And for anybody to deny that, here's the Democratic Party. How tribal can you get? But here, here's something else, Desiree, and, I, and I, if I'm going to tell you this, I think you know I'm telling the truth. You have highly intellectual blacks. Blacks who are very intelligent, very smart, but they will not get off the Democratic plantation because they don't want to make their black families and friends angry with them. They don't want to be outcast. They don't want to be shunned. They don't want to be called Uncle Tom sellout, uh, house Negro. They don't want to be called any of these names. They won't. They don't want to rock the boat and be accused of being white or being a race traitor by voting or going for someone, a politician who is in their best interest. Am I right or wrong? Uh, from what I've seen, uh, I would say yes. Only because it's it's obvious to me how nasty people are. And I know that um, maybe for other people it doesn't have to be race, but it's very hard to go against your family and your community. And even if they don't truly love you deeply because they would let you explore the world on your own terms, um, they are the people who have given you the most love in your life usually because they're close to you and they raise you and whatever. And it's very hard to turn away from that even if, in other ways, it's really uh, not good. I agree. And do you yeah. know? And do you know why I'm the way I am? Because I have no loyalty to the community. When and and I'm not attached to my biological family. I have nothing to do with my biological family. When I when I sworn in to be a police officer, and some of my uh, friends were throwing me a party, my true and it, it hurt my feelings back then. Actually. Um, to graduate, when I graduated from the police academy, uh, some of my friends threw me a big party and a lot of my friends, oh, by the way, everybody black in this story, okay? There's a couple of white people, but 95% <clears throat> of the people in this story is black. Do you know that over half of them didn't show up because now I have officially lost my black card because I work for the man. I am the slave chaser. I am the slave master's, um, what did they call that back then? Uh, I'm, I, I'm the, I, as you know how they had the slaves to catch other runaway slaves. That's what they considered me. And they told me back then, you are no longer uh, welcome to the barbecue and your black card has been revoked. And I remember being so angry. And That's I said, hurtful. Well, it's very, it <laughs> was very hurtful. Your friends. It, absolutely. I'm not going to mm. lie and try to pretend that it didn't hurt me. I'm not even going to lie and, and, and say it didn't uh, make me cry that night. But it, it was a, it was a uh, shocking revelation to let me know, oh, so because I pursued a job that I wanted to make a difference to also help the community, I'm no longer black because I am a sworn in police officer. And that was the day that I said, if my black car has been revoked, then it will stay revoked and I will make sure it will never be up for renewal or, or have the probation officer <laughs> look it over. Uh, that was the end of my connection to the black community from then on did out. You, did and you then ever talk to any of those people again? About absolutely what happened? Not. As a matter of fact, we saw each other a couple of times and, and I confronted them about it. And, and, uh, and they said, they said, they said, um, they called me a sellout. That was the popular word back then. You were just a sellout, you know, saying you selling us out for some pigs. Now, for some reason, pigs, uh, that's police officers. Oh, that's what okay. They, <laughs> it's American slang. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. uh, black people call, uh, they even call pigs. They even call them pigs today. I'm surprised. That's the slang. I've that never has heard been, that. Yeah. That's a slang that has been used for black uh, excuse me for police officers since the 60s 70s 80s 90s and even now even now you know saying in this century they still use the word for pigs 
And so uh, they actually said, you know, I said, dude, I, I'm, I'm working. I'm getting paid. I'm actually helping you guys out. And it's like, you ain't helping it. Point blank was what he said. You ain't helping a nigga out by working for the man. And back why then. Are you, why are you supposed to be helping? I, I find that so weird. Like, why am tribal. I tribal. Like, no, Black like, folks are tribal. I don't care about you. Like maybe in like a general humanity, altruistic sense, but like we're not a team. <laughs> like, I, no, 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 no. According to the black community, this, team. this is, this is what I'm saying. How could anybody just be like, look at rage video and just be angry that she said some <laughs> factual things. Sure. She may have not said it the way you liked it. And sure. She may have used or sourced it from a, from a racist anti-Semitic website, but it doesn't mean what she was saying was incorrect. And so when I say it as a black woman, they don't like it because I know from personal experience, black people are tribal. If you don't say the things that black people want you to say, if you don't do what black people want you to do, you will be out outcast. Let's look at Steve Harvey. Let's take it off of me and look at Steve Harvey. How, do you do you know you 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 know who Steve Harvey is, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. You do know that Steve Harvey loved the black community. He has done so much for the black community. He has given thousands upon thousands upon thousands of black people jobs. He has donated to black uh to the Black United Negro College Fund, to the United Negro College Fund. He has done so much for black people, yet still, what Desiree, what did he what did black people do when Steve Harvey had a talk with D Donald Trump? at the Trump Tower right before his inauguration. What happened? I don't know the specifics. I just knew that something happened that wasn't good. Black people that they didn't lost like him their anymore. fucking mind and turned their backs on Steve Harvey, talked about boycotting Steve Harvey, talk, called Steve Harvey a fucking sellout. They actually turned against Steve Harvey, told him he wasn't invited to the barbecue either. You know what I'm saying? By the way, for those of you who are watching this video, whenever you hear me say, black people say you are no longer invited to the barbecue or you're no longer invited to the cookout, that means that you are now ostracized out of the black community. <laughs> Can I, can I tell you something? Yeah. Um, when I first, um, I decided to, I've actually decided to not pour my efforts anymore into this. I feel like I, maybe as things come up, but not as, as much as in the beginning, like I've made a bunch of videos and said some of my thoughts. But when I first started really realizing what was going on, I just thought that it was so oppressive. This like, uh, cagey, like mentality of, what you're talking about, like having your black card revolt or like expecting to just be a part of, you know, it's like I had a friend, I made a friend once who called me her best friend on like the second week of doing her. And that's very turned wow. off. Wow. Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> like, it's a similar feeling to like, um, it's just like, it feels like claustrophobic. It makes you feel claustrophobic and it feels oppressive. And um, I want to really point out that I had a dream. And like the dreams are tend to be very like deep felt like um, inner experiences that come up in visual imagery. And um, I had a dream about um, being in a house and there was some like dark figure who was like the master or something. And then I like went outside and there were all these uh, black people in chains and they were like working in the fields and um it really bothered me and I was like, I'm going to do something about this. Like, I hate this. And I told them that they don't need to be like this. And this is in the dream. And then they looked at me like I was crazy. And then I, I woke up. <clears throat> and I think that dream was about like me starting my channel and like trying to tell people like you don't need to like have this one mentality. And like, I think it's fine if like you follow a logical argument I'd probably disagree or your feelings or whatever. And like, say you're, you vote Democrat. Like, I think that's fine. But you know something is weird when it's like 90% and like you're like instantly shunned if you you're you no longer agree with the community consensus. So. Are you I, I, that's a very that's a very prof, profound dream. Let me ask you something in reference to that dream. Are you OK with knowing that you're not going to be able to save most black people? From themselves. Uh, I think I am. 
I think I am mostly because of my own personal life, not to do with this, but just other things, um, personal challenges I faced. And knowing that I couldn't, no matter what anybody told me, I would already have had to be on a certain path to go after and towards certain things. So I think I would definitely love to like connect with anybody, whatever race or whether or not you're interested in these things. But also if you are, I like, uh, help them or connect with them in this thing that I may have some um, connection and relation with them about, such as through my videos. But if they don't want that, and if they're not on that path, and I think that that is their decision, and uh, it does make me a little bit sad, but I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay with that. You are like, so. You know so. what? You know what I like <laughs> about you. You are the polar opposite of me. I am. Uh, but but I want to say this, the black community needs more people like you and not me because they need some, they need more intelligent black women who are more nurturing, caring, yeah. um, and you have more patience. Uh, and if I'm saying anything incorrect, please correct, please correct, correct me if I'm saying anything wrong, but you have more patience, um, with the um, I'm trying to use a word without using profanity <laughs> with, <laughs> with, with the, uh, the, uh, behavior with their, um, um, with their improper behavior and, and fight against you, the retaliation against you, 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 you have a very nurturing soul and, and heart about you. Um, and it's needed. However, my follow-up question to that is, what are you doing to protect yourself when you are disappointed and to make sure that you don't get hurt? Like, I, the <clears throat> way I felt when I was, when, my, when people who I was going to college with and, and I had been friends with and we were cool, we cried together, we ate together, who didn't come to my, my celebration party because they considered me a race traitor, was devastating and i didn't have any any way and my my way of protecting myself was to was to cut that cord i don't want you to be that way i don't think you i don't think it's possible you have more of love for the black community than i can ever have but what are you doing to protect yourself to make sure it doesn't happen that way well i don't think it's really possible for that to happen okay. because i didn't grow up in the, uh, yeah, the US. Yeah, I don't yeah. have that background that True, I'm coming point, from. So like most of my, uh, like I made a couple like actual um, black friends here, but most of my black friends who are like, I'm very tight with are in Jamaica. And like, I don't have that, uh, or they immigrated here. And I don't have that like um, <clears throat> someone who I'm very close with that I, that's one day going to shun me. And the people who I make friends with now, I don't come from that um, context. Okay. And um, I'm very upfront and like I will tell people, I try, like if it, I don't try and just bring it up out of nowhere, but I try not to lie about my thoughts and like I have to work on that. <laughs> but like I, I don't want to lie about who I am or what I think about certain things. So eventually people- Or censor yourself. Like, oh, you don't, you don't yeah. feel like dumbing down yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So people will find out about my, my politics, but um, all the people in my life who are like actually close to me, um, they're perfectly fine with every part of me and I'm, I want it to be that way. I will say though that I do have to like not look at YouTube comments occasionally because I just get annoyed. <laughs> I just get annoyed at like how different people are. Um, but that's not to say I don't also see all the very nice comments, which I do appreciate as well. But I do have to, like, you know, just turn that off. So. <laughs> yeah. Now, let me, I, I, you wanted to ask, you wanted to ask some questions in reference to policing and police brutality. I did. So, so what, is, what is your question that you wanted to uh, bring to the table discussion? Well, like, I just wanted you to sort of um, enlighten me and educate me on, like, I do know a bit but I wanted to hear from your perspective on like the historical relationship uh, between, I guess, uh, black people and um, um, the armed security policing uh, forces of the state. 
um, and how it relates to today. But before you sort of talk about that, I wanted to say that I have this weird conflict going on for things like, say, the the war on on drugs mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. the prison system, because. I think, first of all, I'm not a fan of there being victimless crimes. Like, I think, like, like most drugs. Like, I think the actual bad action should be mm, reprimanded, but not what someone does with their body, even if that could eventually lead to that bad action happening against another person. Um, so I have some support for those things, but I don't like that people always bring it up because it's hurting black people like it should just be something that's wrong not just because it's hurting black people and i also find myself having to work up sympathy <clears throat> for people who have actually committed a crime because i, I feel as if, if there's a rule wait, 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 you, wait, wait, i'm sorry i'm sorry Deborah. you said you have to work up sympathy for people who created a crime who have committed a crime why why do you have to be sympathetic to these people <laughs> Well, that's the thing, because people are telling me to be, especially because they are black and considering of the, the country, because I feel like, yeah, maybe there are some rules that I really would like to change, that I would really like people to, like, work on these laws and, like, advocate for these people. Like, I'm strongly, like, in favor of that. But I hate that it's, oh, look at these poor black people. And, like, if the rule is there and everybody else is following it, then you should follow it, too. Then you like, don't sympathize <laughs> for the ones that break the law. I don't have no sympathy. Girl, oh, Lord, this is a good one right here. Go ahead, continue. <laughs> oh, that, that was just it. I just I do, I just, I, you don't happened. have to have no sympathy for no criminal. Uh-uh. Matter of fact, I'm time, being... I, I, don't think, I don't think that people, certain people should be made criminals because of, like, arbitrary laws. But I just hate that it's, it's like only for some people or like people only pay attention because of some people like and i know they'll say oh well these laws were made to hurt the black people Wrong. but if it's being applied to everybody and everybody else is following it then like i just feel like the standards should just be the same if you're going to make the argument for the law make the argument for the law but if it's just for like one set of people i don't like it black people who are in this case when we're talking about the law I love this slang terminology that's used for blacks who like to break the law but want to be exempt from the law. Uh, the terminology is called didn't do nothings, okay? I keep saying that. Yeah, this is what <laughs> it means. The didn't do nothings. Yeah. It, it, it's a meme, and it's a black guy who, you know, committed a crime, and when the white police officer is arresting him, he's like, I didn't do nothing, man. I didn't do nothing. Uh -huh. And then they take him to his black mom. He's like, Mom, I didn't do nothing. Nothing. And so people being, this is what they people call black criminals didn't didn't, didn't do's or didn't do nothings. It's very appropriate because they didn't do nothings and their mama will get on TV and tell myself, my son is a Christian and he was going to go to Harvard and study in chemical engineering and he didn't do nothing and they got him in jail. And this, this is a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Um, uh, here's the but thing. But can I pause you for a second? Yeah. Um, I think that the, like something similar happens, uh, like say for example in Jamaica where there's a lot of crime and then there, there's a criminal and blah blah blah. But all of these things don't happen in the context of race. Um, so a lot of things too that I see that people complain about, I'm like this kind of stuff happens elsewhere, but people don't blame it on on racism. But continue. Uh, you're absolutely right. Um, <laughs> the, but I'm gonna tell you what's who's to blame for that. Mainstream media, uh, when a when a let's say for instance when a black criminal gets shot by a white police officer and he got shot just i mean it was a justified shooting the mainstream media will instantly go to the mother because this is always never a fault nine times out of ten a daddy is never in the picture um mm -hmm. and want to interview her and they kind of i've seen this actually as a police officer where the news media get in here and says, hi, I'm so-and-so from News Channel 5, and I, let me just tell you, I'm so sorry for your loss. I understand the racism on black people. So they prime them up. They prime, and because these people are not that intelligent, they don't realize that they're being played automatically. You know what I'm saying? They're, this is automatically disingenuous of what the, uh, the, uh, the news anchor or the news... Um, uh, the news female is doing that's not the name I, I can't I think anchor was right yeah okay news anchor is doing is priming her up 
to play the victim and to apologize for the criminal behavior of her son. Okay. So therefore she's not going to be accountable for being a bad mother. And he's, she's not going to hold her son for being accountable for having a gun, robbing a store, pointing a gun at the police officer and getting shot in return. So, you know, this is what, and, and, and the mainstream media highlights more of the black race than any other race. And you're absolutely right. This happens across the board. As a matter of fact, there was three white. This is this is a story, a true story that supports your what you what you just said. Three white boys uh, break into a house of another white man and his son. The son takes an AR-15 and pop them all headshots, all three of them in the head. They bring they bring a knife to go rob this man's house. And because the son used an AR-15, which was a legal shooting, he killed all three of them, which was also legal because they broke into the house to, to, to do bodily harm to this person. The white mama got on TV and, no, the white daddy. The white daddy, <laughs> now this is something you won't see in the black community. The white daddy <laughs> got on the television and said, well, I think it was unfair that little, that man had a, 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 a rifle to shoot and kill my son. He only had a knife. Not just neglecting the fact that the boy was broken to the man's house. And if it was, if it wasn't for his son being there to have his own AR 15 to shoot these three. Okay. He's not going to take responsibility for the fact that his son broke the law. He's not going to take responsibility for the fact that his son is, is a criminal and had a criminal record. It's the fact that he brought a knife to a gunfight and now it's the owner's son's responsibility fault for killing them so so you so, but you but guess what that news did not circulate nationally or internationally because it's white people but when it's a black person it's never their fault it's always a racist police officer even if the police officer is black he's racist because you know he's yeah a police i officer. noticed that yeah so it, this, <laughs> ignore this, it when the this is how it is black. here in america this is mm. how it is in america it's no common it's sense whatsoever grand, i feel like they just there's just this grand narrative and I, I think it's based in historical fact uh, um kind of because they also ignore like the suffering of other peoples um but it is based in historical fact <clears throat> yeah but they just have this narrative that they just try to fit everything into and um it just seems a little absurd to me from the outside i'm sure to people here like it makes perfect sense but it, it really just i just don't get it <laughs> <laughs> it seems really absurd it's to me um, it's something that's uh being promoted uh by the uh the whites on the left the li on the left whether they're regressive progressive liberal whatever they want to call themselves um do they you think go ahead do you think that there are because you always say that they're playing and manipulating that people but don't you think that there are people, I think that it has to do with building up their own ego like in, to some degree, but don't you think there are people who, are, who genuinely feel that this is the truth and they're just trying to help? I think um, that there's a very small percentage of white people who believe they are helping. Like, like I saw this video of white people who believe that the voter ID was racist. And you see these stupid white college students talk about how black people don't know where the DMV is to get an actual, uh, uh like, <laughs> so I mean, and, and, and I, I'm actually listening to them and I'm saying to myself, are they saying that because they're racist or are they saying that because they're dumb as hell? And the, the latter shows up. It's that they, they meet, not all of them, but I'm going to say those are the small percentage of just they're these white people who subconsciously believe that blacks are inferior and they say stupid stuff like blacks don't know where the DMV is and blacks can't afford to get a $10 or $15, even if it's $25 uh, a government ID card to vote, you know what I'm saying? That in itself is the most racist thing. Not is not the most racist thing, but it's one of the most it's one of the most stupidest things I've ever heard. That just shows how they believe that we as black people are inferior. And when I looked at this woman, I didn't see any. I didn't see her do this as 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 um, being an a a clan member. Okay, 
I see her doing this out of ignorance, but she looked, but I saw her also looking at black people like their pet, like it's her pets. It's that white people are the owners, uh, for the lack of better words, and must protect and cuddle and take care and nurture black people because we are so helpless. We can't fend for ourselves. So we need these white messiahs to come out there and speak for us and fight for our behalf. But for the most part, I do believe it's coming from racism, actually, and bigotry from the left. Yeah, I, um, I do honestly think um, I don't really see these people as evil. I even have people who I would call friends, though I, I actually argue with them, um, who are on the left. But I think that the left is more racist <laughs> yeah. um, than the right. I actually think that. You want to hear something? I'm down here in the South, okay? I come from, I'm from the North, from Washington, D.C. Grew up poor, very dangerous neighborhood, Southeast D.C. And there's racism in in both sections of of america but let me tell you why i appreciate a racist in the south versus a racist in the north the white racist in the north will smile in my face and pat me on my back and you know pretend to be my friends but call me a nigga and all kinds of monkeys and gorillas behind my back and actually do things to try to sabotage my uh growth or advancement or whatever i'm about to do Whereas if the, the racist down here will call me, you know, the N word to my face, they will actually let me know where they stand. They'll say, I don't like Has you. Has that happened? I haven't had. No, any, I never had. I no, I never had anybody call me. me. I never had just. Like I've never, okay. I never had I've a never white had person call me an uh, uh, N word to my face, but I've had, this is true story. I have been black, black, uh, bald by whites in the North. Who black pretend, bald? Um, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I sorry. have an idea. I have to guess you. I, I, I had an opportunity to uh, take advantage of a job position and a white person who I considered my friend actually sabotaged that by lying to the owner of, uh, of this company. Oh, wow. And basic, the good thing about this is I wouldn't have known he did it had the owner not brought both of us into the room and, and actually confronted both of us about what my so-called white friend has told him. And then once he, once we all were in the room, come to find out that this person, this white person who I thought was my friend, uh, was actually trying to sabotage my advancement in this, in this, in this position. And by telling lies about I was How still... How do you know that it was because you were black, though? Because he said, you can't trust these kind of people. He told the boss that. Okay. So he told... Okay. He, he didn't, he didn't okay. call me an N-word. He said, well, you know how these people are. And that's when the, my, my boss at the time realized that something was up. Because if you thought that I was this evil black person who likes to steal, all right then why are we real good friends? Why would you invite me to your house? So he knew something was up and he brought us into the room together and had this white person who I thought was my friend confront me, come to find out he lied about it. He was he was crying and everything. He was like, I'm so sorry. You know, I, I'm not racist. I just, you know, I just, he made up some stupid excuse that he didn't want me to get the job over this girl he's boinking. I mean, excuse me, I gotta stop using slang. This girl, I got had, that. Oh, you know what boy can mean? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> but, when um, I, but when I came to the South, I never been called a, a, a nigga in, in, in by a white person in, to my face at all either. But I've had a white man, okay? Seriously, I've had a white man talk to me one-on-one -on -one who said he is, uh, he does not like black people. He will never like black people. He'll never trust black people. And he referred to me, you and your kind. And he was very upfront about it. He's like, I just want y'all to stay in your own lane, not own lane, your own section and just leave me and my kind alone. So it's like, I love the upfrontness here in the South. And it's not that prominent. You'll have a lot of people believing that the blacks and the whites are at odds with each other. In my, in my experiences, experience coming from the North, 
I see a more harmonious relationship between blacks and whites in the South than any other area in California, in New York, in Boston, in, in uh, Chicago, Detroit. <clears throat> we are more harmonious here because we actually speak our minds and we don't hold anything back. And we have, uh, I, 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 I think in general, that's what works. Yeah, yeah, and, and I have a very loving. I have a very loving relationship <laughs> with with my white friends down here, so it's like it's 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 a place I don't even see. Even when I plan on moving from Georgia to Texas, I have no intention of moving from the South because down here, there the white people down here are not scary. They're not spineless. They're very upfront. They tell you what's going on, and I I love that. And and we have the same values and and the understanding and respect for one another now of course you're going to have uh white people who are not going to like blacks but you have a whole lot of blacks down here who don't like white people you're going to have that all over the united states yeah that's interesting to me one because i've never really been to the south i've traveled um up over across the north to washington state um and I was dating someone who was white for a very long time. And the only time we ever had any issue was when, I can't remember what state, but we just had like a funny stare. And I honestly, I was pretty oblivious, but he was like, I think this person was like staring at us because he had an issue, blah, blah, blah. But um, what you're saying is really interesting to me because I've been up here. Um, <clears throat> I'm up in the north. Right now, I'm, I'm upstate. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I don't know. I don't really notice it, but maybe it's because I'm not looking. <laughs> I right. don't know. I'm not looking for it, but I felt pretty comfortable um, up here. And I probably felt more uncomfortable like when I went to the city, but that was also just being in the city. Um, but remember, you're in the mm. north. If you're going to have races up there, they'll never let you know. They're going to be mm. the ones who are going to... See, this is what I'm saying. This is different between the north, the north races versus the southern races. The southern mm. races are going to let you know they don't they don't like you okay mm. because you're black the northern ones may not like you but you're because you're black and you won't know it that's what i can't hang i can't deal with that um that that doesn't really bother me like what bothers me is if someone were able to like stop me from achieving my goals because i'm fine like the way i, I interact with the world um you know, like, I'm pretty polite. Like, I, I like when people are polite to me and, like, I like, say hi to them. But I only really, like, socially interact with, like, my friends. So it's okay if I can find those people. But maybe I just haven't been here long enough. Like, I think it's possible that, you know, like, one day I will be like, oh, I can't stand the people up here because, like, some some terrible thing happened because of my race or something like that. Like, I think about that. But it's, nah, it's, you it's won't, only been an experience. You won't experience that up north. You just won't. Mm. Um, I haven't so far. Nah, like, I've won't. been in situations a lot where no. uh, maybe I'm I'm like one of three black people or something. No, a lot of times <laughs> I've noticed that blacks will fab fabricate a story. Hell, look at all these fake hate crimes that black people are creating because there isn't really any white people actually doing this. You know what I'm saying? They just had another guy in the Navy who drew nigger on the wall and messed up in his, the navy? Yeah, he's in the navy mm. actually. He this is a this is an actual navy man. This is um I'll give you the I'll give you the uh, link if you want to look over it. Um, because I think I may have retweeted this, but it's another fake ha uh, hate crime that another black person. Because I think this is this is a actually there's so many fake hate crime hoaxes that I do believe there is a website dedicated to it called. Don't quote me on it. I think it's called fakehatecrime.com. It's, it's so many black people creating uh, fake hate crimes because white people <clears throat> aren't really doing it. And they want to feed into this, the white man is the racist, the white man is evil, the white man is the devil type of narrative. And because white people are not actually making nooses and burning crosses like they did in the 60s, they have to create this this fictitious uh, 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 scene and blame it on white people when actually themselves have done it. And this is what I find to be the case when black people want to tell their story. They, oh my God, they lie so 
freaking much is pathetic about how the white, the white man said this to me or or oh I'm sure you've seen this one before my somebody tweeted this for a second somebody this black man said my seven-year-old son said daddy why do white people hate us so much <laughs> you know what? and so many black people was like you a liar <laughs> that's not something a seven-year-old would freaking would be like that's hey. true yeah i'm like a seven-year-old hey daddy why do white it. people hate us so much and see this is what i'm talking about this is, makes me so angry with our people hence why i'm so glad you you know you still on team black i'm not honey i'm just not going <laughs> it okay and well i'm not really on team black like i would rather just not like think about that but i i know i have to because like i have to live in if i want to be here like i have to live in the society and like it's a big part of uh at least for, at the moment I, I think it's gotten worse um since i've been here um but it's just a big part of uh, american culture right now yeah. but i wouldn't really say i'm on team black i just on team humanity and want people to get along yeah <laughs> That is a wonderful thing. Unfortunately, it's not going to be the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I see it getting worse right now. I feel like people just like hit some. I mean, I really hope it, it like doesn't get violent or anything. I don't. I mean, it already got violent once. Once, uh, and I'm sure you've seen my videos where I have showcased uh, how blacks are killing whites. Um, and uh, we already know what's going on in Europe, so we don't even have to mention what's going on over there. We just stick to our own country here in America. But I, I don't like the fact that now whites are the punching bags. Now whites are the doormats. And I have a problem well, with that. Well, I, I think it's going to like, cause a backlash, you know? Like, people get annoyed, and they, everybody has uh, a limit. And it just seems to be. I find that they're limited know? to their children because when I did that story on the racist black nurse, that was the first time. And actually, I when I actually contacted the hospital about. I don't how, know this story. Yeah, I have kind of not been following. I've been. Yeah, not, uh, 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 like a, a black woman who's a nurse uh, was. She was spewing a lot of racist, uh, racially infused tweets. And in one of her tweets, we're talking. Oh, to, yes. Yeah, Sorry, so she I, was I like, see. white people, white women should feed their white sons to the wolves and sacrifice them to the wolves and stuff like that. How could someone who's supposed to be a nurse at a at a children's hospital say such the, most, the horrible, the most horrible things? And I have actually fought against the racism against whites, and I would not expect them whites to even get involved because for the most part many of them are cowards and they don't want to be involved they don't want to be called racist yeah. they don't i think so too for sure i've definitely seen that it's like this taboo thing yeah but it's not good like no it's, it's not, not good to, to but do but like, but speak up. they made me happy when it was children when you said there's a line that's crossed the line is their children that's when I saw them angry. That's when I saw them actually unite together and fight against. I was, I was saying to myself, is this the white people I've been with? What the hell? I was like, where did y'all white folks come from? After all these stories I've talked about, you know, white men getting shot and white women getting raped and all this other stuff. Now you want to act outraged? But it was the children. That's where they draw the line. And we, and, and as far as I'm concerned, we're going to take baby steps and go from there to moving up to where they should care about their race being, you know, picked off because of the color of their skin. There, there's a serial killer who actually killed, uh, um, men between the, their 40s and 60s specifically because of the age range specifically because they're white and specifically because they're male this black man did this serial killer killed all the, i think he killed five and he shot them all in the head when they wasn't looking so i i wanted them to get outraged over that nope nothing not <laughs> they get nothing it's like but but when yeah. but when it came to their children that's when i saw the outrage so that's the answer to your question is you know they go when is they draw the line that's the line the line is their children but it's it's baby steps to get for me because this is this is my this is the fight i like to fight i don't like people going against any race Just like like right now i'm fighting about this these uh people uh, attacking the jews you know saying because they're jewish and hating america is a really weird country like people are <laughs> obsessed with identity no matter i mean i've I've been, I was talking to someone about this and like I was like maybe 
Jamaica is a somewhat unique place. Like maybe this happens in lots of other places, but like, and, and, and Jamaica isn't perfect either. Like I never really experienced it, but I just from what other people tell me, there must be some tension there too. Um, um, I didn't America, see it. I didn't see any racial tension when I was in Jamaica. I the never. Two times. I really like. I literally did notice. No, I didn't, I didn't see didn't any. Care about that stuff. Mm-mm. But America is like, um, obsessed <laughs> with just like they the are. We, we and like culture and. <laughs> And it's just like, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm like, how can you be so obsessed? We are. We're cute. very obsessed with identity. Yeah. We are very obsessed yeah. with uh, racism. And uh, it's it's something that's going to be around. And I, I, I like the uh, statement that was said by the uh, actor whose name just, uh, who escapes me right now. He's the famous actor who uses his voice a lot. Um, where he says, if you want to stop, if you want to stop racism, stop talking about it. You know, saying I could be misquoting. Oh, that's him. Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. There you go. I think that's true. Yeah. Like I really think that's true. Not only really stop talk talking people. about it, but stop having a black history. You know what I'm saying? We don't need a black yeah, history. I think I heard about that there being a black caucus or something. We don't need and, like, a black caucus. I think that stuff don't shouldn't you... exist. You, you know, know like, what? Like... Let me tell you something about the black caucus. <laughs> Do you know a black Republican can't join the black caucus? <laughs> really? Really, the black caucus is for black Democrats only. (laughs) And that's that's the thing too. Like it's like black people in the U.S. are allowed um, to be intolerant. They're allowed to. They're allowed to be racist. racist. We're allowed to be racist. They're allowed, and it's it's just it's wrong. It's just it's just wrong. Yeah, yeah. It's very wrong. And 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 I said, listen, because. It's safe for me to call out my own people, our own people, then whites. Because if whites do it, they're going to be considered racist. I don't care yeah. if they call me an Uncle Tom, a coon, or whatever. You know, say a bed wench. I don't care if they call me any of those things. But I'm still going to call out the racism that our white pe- that that, uh, that our people uh, project out to white people. And uh, and and this stupid notion that blacks can't be racist. And this this is another reason why a lot of whites on the left will never debate me because I tell them, you know, I used to be racist, right? You do know I used to. Hate oh, really? Women. You were? Yeah, yeah. I was a member wow. of the Nation of Islam, and um, what was that like psychologically? Like, I joined like? I joined the Nation of Islam because <clears throat> I thought that I needed to fulfill. Uh, uh, I don't know where I got this from, but when I was in the police department, I had a near life experience, which is another story for another time. It's a long story, but I knew I was going to get out of the policing because policing was just my plan C. It was never really my plan A. But uh, Mm -hmm. once I was getting out of policing, I said, I need to be a wife and a mother, but I have never had that mentality of being a mother without a, without a husband. And so when I converted into the nation of Islam, one of the things that was actually instilled upon us is to get married and have, um, and have children. Okay. Now, while there, we are also conditioned to blame white people. We're told that Yaqub is a, a black Muslim scientist who created white people that they're an abomination. We must destroy them. <laughs> okay. I'm a girl child. Let me tell you, I can tell you all kind of crazy stuff. And we were actually taught to hate white people. Uh, we were taught to hate the Jews, but we were taught to hate the white people more than the Jews, believe it or not. And, um, and I, I can only stay in it for six months because I couldn't buy it. I've had white people get me white people. Are the reason why I'm not poor. White Jews are the reason why I have excellent money management skills. White people have taught me so much and helped me so much. I felt like a traitor against them because it's like, here it is. They helped me more than my own black family, believe it or not. And, and, and definitely more than the black community. But I, I, I just couldn't feed into the lies told about how the white man is the devil and the white man is always oppressing uh, black people. I was told these things and I, for a while I bought into it, but my intelligence just wouldn't let me stay into the lie. after a while. I was just like, this is a bunch of BS. I can't buy this stuff out. And I just left, you know what I'm saying? I just got out of it, but I got out of it and got into the, <laughs> to the, to orthodox Islam, which was worse. I didn't stay there long. You know what I'm saying? I guess, uh, I guess if you really want to know, I was back then 
believing that I was supposed to be a mother. I don't believe that now, but I was never going to do that as a single woman. There was no way. And I have to admit that Islam, whether it's the nation of Islam or Sunni Islam, either one, they were determined to make sure that all women who wanted to get married got married. That was attractive to me, believe it or okay. not. So, yeah. But, mm, okay. No, no, no. Go ahead and ask. If you got well, a I was just going to say, I still don't understand. No, I do understand. You did say it. I was going to say if you didn't answer my question, but you did. Um, I want to say, too, that for me, a lot of the friends I made when I came here were white people. And I have to specify that I didn't, I really didn't see them as white people. And uh, I still, I kind of do a little bit now because I, I it's like kind of impossible. <laughs> but when I came here for a long time, I just didn't see it at all. Um, so for me, a lot of this uh, stuff and what makes me want to talk is um, I feel as if I have to stand up <laughs> for people being attacked. And I know, yeah. I know that like there are people who are racist against black people. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't be stood up for either, but like I feel like I'm, I'm in a somewhat unique position just because of my history mm -hmm. um, coming here. It makes me, I feel compelled to like do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. I do too yeah. because I felt that I betrayed uh, the people who actually helped me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. the, these these are people who actually helped me get out of this, the, the poverty. They, 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 they actually, the, the, the programs that are afforded to blacks, they made sure I took advantage of these programs. They also helped me out when I sabotaged certain areas, you know, of my success. And they just got me out of, they gave me the guidance that my own family couldn't give me. They taught me some, they taught me a lot of, of skills such as how to build a business, you know, um, what, how to market, how to finance, you know, they taught me the biggest thing is they, the most important thing I have been installed into me is don't have debt. Don't be mm. a person full of debt. Learn, learn the difference between investments, learn the difference between what's the difference between the investment versus the asset and a liability. You need to know these things. And, and, and this is stuff that my own black parents, my own family never taught me. And I felt so bad <clears throat> that, uh, I went into this racist cult uh, which, you know, in which is the nation of Islam, the Sunni Muslims were not racist. It was the nation of Islam. I felt so bad to betray the very people who helped me. And you know what, Desiree, I, I would not blame it if the, you know, my friends, when I came out of that and apologized and they said, you know, I'm glad you're not in there anymore, but you know, you hurt me and I don't want to have anything to do with you. So, you know, bye. But they <laughs> They expect, they, 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 um, <clears throat> oh God, I don't want to get emotional about it, but it's like, they, they embraced me back and they forgave me with compassion and it's the compassion of white people that is their strength, but it's also their weakness. Hence why I am so, um, I can see that. yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's why I'm so passionate about defending them from the injustice that's happening to them now. Uh, I want to say to you, I um, don't want to presume that you haven't figured all that out already, but I'm sorry for like what you went through with, I guess, your friends who turned on you and shunned you because that sounds very painful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me to do that to, to, to my own friends, you know what I'm saying? I just, I, I passed on the uh, dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So you see how hypocritical that was. What was done to me, I did to my white friends. So it's like, okay, now, but see, uh, this is where you learn from your life lessons. And once you get to a, mm -hmm. to a point of your life where you say, okay, I've learned that I mastered that. Let me, uh, let me do the right thing. Yeah. Like you just said, let me do the right thing from now on. I want to get a little bit technical. There's something I've been struggling with. Um, you know, when I think about IQ and it being um, environmental or mostly or genetic um, and people talking about regression to the mean, 
And I don't understand that argument, or rather, I don't really buy it that, um, like, say, for example, people like me come over who are like smart immigrants from their country that has an average, has an average low IQ. And then uh, I guess they will meet with someone or I will meet with someone. And then my kids will have a lower IQ. Um, but isn't that completely dependent? No, upon... no, 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 no. Your, your kids won't have a lower IQ. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying if you mate with someone who has a lower <laughs> IQ than you, than yours, then you're, I don't No, God. I don't think your children would necessarily have a lower IQ if you mate with someone who has a low low IQ. I, I, either, either, either. Well, they, it's percentages, like genetics working, you know, like probabilities. But yeah, um, true, 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 true. Yeah. I, I'd say that like, I don't get that argument because it, it all depends on who is mating who. Like, it's not something that you can kind of predict. I guess you can kind of see the trend that society is going in, but I don't really think. I just hear people making that argument and I don't think it's true. Like, I think it depends on who is meeting who and not everybody is reproductively successful. So you can't predict that the average is just going to stay at that same average. But like, it, it might it, rise if, over if, time. If two people, um, if two people, um, it depends on the IQ level. For example, I know that the, and this is something I have observed, uh, when it comes to the Azikanazi Jews, is that they're very specific on um, having uh, a wife or a husband um, within a certain... They like to marry each other. Oh, but see, here you have some Jews that are not so intelligent. So you have the... Uh, <laughs> The Jews from, I, I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but you have some some Jews from East, uh, uh, Southeast uh, or Eastern Europe, and they are not considered, um, they are not considered to be the prime mate or, or even a, a suitable mate for the children, for parents who have children of the Azikanazi Jews, so therefore they will shun that Jew uh, away because his, you know, whether his intellect or his lifestyle or his culture is not up to par to theirs. <clears throat> so they tend mm -hmm. to, they tend to keep their IQ levels up. And I'm, I'm so salty on this. I mean, so salty. I'm so, um, I'm so uh, rusty on, on this. I have to start to go back and, and research my notes, but therefore they keep, they keep, uh, their, they like to marry off their daughters and sons, uh, to someone that they feel is in the same, uh, intellectual, um, range so that they could keep the high, high IQ up. However, they get angry or even Asians, Southeast Asians don't like it when their daughters will marry a white man or even a black man. Thus, they believe that the IQ will be lower. Is that but what you're talking about? Yeah, a little bit. But one, from what I know, people tend to choose mates who have similar IQ to them. So that doesn't make sense. Just because it's from a different race, you're, you're likely to pick someone who has a similar IQ. Um, but uh, yeah, that does pretty much tie into it. Like it's possible for people to, for a group average IQ, it probably won't change quickly among the entire, around the entire globe. Yeah. But for specific sections, um, for one race, for example, in this scenario, black people, um, that their the average IQ would raise over time, even if it's most of genetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're actually, it is actually is rising uh, over time, especially in this day and age. The food is better. Um, um, I think the selection process is, oh, I don't know when. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, what I, I think about. No, I you know where I'm about like to go welfare. with that one. <laughs> well, I think the welfare system is a, is a, a lot of people say it's, it's a eugenics program in a, in a, like a soft It is way. actually because you have um, Shaquita who, who actually wants to mate with Tyrone and both of them are dumb in a bag of hammers. And so, you know, yeah. what, what, you know, uh, 
I mean, I I don't like to tell, like, I don't want to be like, I have a real issue with people like, well, we just want smart people because society will work better. And that may be true. But no, everybody I can't be to, smart. I don't wanna, yeah. I don't but we have too many dumb people. people. Sorry? <laughs> everybody can't be smart, but we have way too many dumb people. <laughs> I think most people in your society could be smart. But I don't want to deny, tell people like they can't like have a family or whatever but not at yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Abs- absolutely i agree with that i agree with um, that I-, I guess i was i wasn't really asking you a question i was trying to refute the statement of the mean iq just being yeah, lower the, 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 the it, iq of the parents <laughs> will affect the iq of the child because it is genetic actually yeah so and um, i do know this i read it somewhere it's between 15 above and 15 below IQ points is like what you your offspring will have. I'm not sure how that works with the the main. I'm rusty. I have to. I have you. Pro- I'm going to believe you because I have to go back and look at my notes. I'm so busy di- uh, dealing with other history lessons. Everything I have. See, the fact is, when a skeptic community refused to debate me or rage, you know, mm-hmm. saying. It was no need for me because, see, I, I was rusty back then. But had they agreed to do the debate with me in rage, that's when I, I have, girlfriend, I have a, a actually, believe it or not, I have a trunk. I have an actual trunk, an old-fashioned trunk. And it's filled with books and studies and actually uh, essays of on this material and i was like i was gonna it, i was so excited i was like oh please let these idiots agree to debate me <laughs> right. so i can actually open that trunk and go into my notes and re- reread these books and everything and actually you know take these mm. notes i was gonna work on it for an entire week and i was we was ready mm. to kick their butts now we also had uh, some of the members of the of the ar who was going to willing to help us too you know because the they are uh, all right Oh, right. okay, okay, so they was gonna even mm. help us and stuff like that, and I was like, okay, they we was gonna have. It, we were so excited because we were gonna have. I was go- we were gonna do our studying. Me and Rach was gonna study together, and then we was gonna have a round table with me, her, members of the art right was gonna be around, and we was gonna actually, uh, actually have these mock debates that was going to help strengthen our knowledge on this in case we were missing anything. And because they, and because the skeptic community refused to, uh, to take up on our offer to, to debate, I never got an opportunity to open that trunk and actually re work this. But I want to thank you because you know what? I don't like the fact that I'm rusty on this. And uh, <laughs> I, 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 I kid you not, I, I promise you I'm going tonight. I'm going to go in there and pull that trunk out and I'm just going to start refreshing myself. So thank you for this because I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be rusty on this type of science. So Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, um, you kind of mentioned a bit, but what was your emotional reaction, you know, when discovering this information about IQ and specifically, um, between race. I also want to put in here that um, I know you you might not like this, but I I really feel as though IQ shouldn't be studied based on like the racial the the four major whatever the the main categories of races. Um, I think that they should either look more like with ethnicity, um, or they should just look at IQ and not divide it up by race. However, I do think it's important in today's society to explain stuff because of the blame the blame game um but i want to know your emotional reaction uh, i was when you found out i was overjoyed um <laughs> i was I, I, let me tell you how i found out it's a long story but uh, i was watching uh mr Jer- jared taylor he was on a black uh talk show i think it was i think <clears throat> it was um ah oh, damn it again i keep forgetting these names um Montel, I think he was on the Montel Williams show. Mm-hmm. And I know that is, the mm-hmm. things that he said in front of that black audience was not only bold, that he wasn't rude, he wasn't confrontational. I thought it took, I, I was so afraid for, I didn't even know Mr. Taylor. I'd never seen him before in my life. But for him to talk about race and IQ and the difference uh, how 
blacks perform in schools versus whites perform in schools. And then when the black, the angry black members from the audience begin to attack him, he was, oh my God, I felt so, <laughs> he didn't, and call him names, he didn't get angry. He was just sit there very patiently. And he said, if what you're saying is true, then why aren't blacks performing at a certain level of tests versus whites? Now, I'm, I'm paraphrasing what he said, but when he said that, it was like, ding! <clears throat> and I, mm -hmm. I said to myself, now, of course, he continued to talk, and I, I, I never forget, I, I wrote his name down, and I began to research him and, and, and you know, basically just try to find out all kinds of information I could about him on the internet. And, um, uh, and, and his re and his, his enlightenment has t taken me to other people, of course, you know, Charles Murray and everybody else who's dealing with race and IQ, but because I have traveled and I've seen how blacks act and, uh, how blacks behave in other countries outside of the United States, it was the aha factor that I needed to make me think that there's nothing wrong with me. I thought that something, because I didn't buy into a lot of the things that black, that my black family brought into, because I did not, um, I, it was easy for me to walk away from the stupidity and, and the ignorance that, uh, that was, so profound and practice on a daily basis in the black community. And I didn't want to be a part of that. Uh, and I was made to feel guilty about that. And it made me understand how, how I was different and how other blacks are different. And then of course, that's when I got into Thomas soul, who is my, who is my, I love Thomas. Oh, soul. I, I, think love he's Thomas amazing. Soul. I think his brain is like, I'm in love with his brain. I love that man. I love that man. <laughs> yeah. I love that man. I love him so much because here you have a black man who says, it's nothing wrong with you. This is what's going on. But I have to thank Jerry Taylor. Cause if it wasn't for Jerry Taylor, I would have never met Thomas. Sowell. okay. So it was like, mm -hmm. it was the, it was the puzzle that made everything make sense. It all made sense. And I know you don't like that people are focusing on race and IQ, but mm -hmm. actually I, I like that it focused on race and IQ because like right now I'm fighting on behalf of the Jews and, and I understand why people hate the Jews so much It's because these people are smart. They're the best entrepreneurs. They're the best business people. And, and because you have some who are better than others, now you want to attack the entire race of people and, yeah. and, and see if you put Jews and you put these Jews in certain kind of messed up situation, they still prosper. They still freaking, they, they turn, they take lemon and make delicious lemonade. Why would I mm -hmm. hate that? Why don't I learn from them? Like I learned from white people and, and actually do what they're doing. Cause since they wrote the formula, why would I hate the person who makes the for who made the formula? Why don't I just get a copy of the formula and do the same damn thing? Yeah, I really, I really want to point this out. Like something about um, what they call Black Pride here, which really comes off as a lot of hate yeah. to me. I realize that what people are doing is they're not trying to build themselves up. They're just focused on tearing other people yeah. down. And like, yeah. there's a big difference between those, <laughs> between those things. It's the you know, same they want thing. to just rewrite history to make themselves look good. And Desiree, instead, if you see you the know, race and IQ, tell me if I'm wrong on this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, doo doo rolls downhill. All right, blacks on average have lower IQ than whites. So guess what? The white man is to blame. Whites on average have lower IQ than as the Kanazi Jews and the Asians. So they are to blame. Do you mm -hmm. see how it is? Because people don't. Yeah, that's take what happens. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Like I mean, Thomas Sowell also like really uh, gave me the research on that. Like I, mm -hmm. when he was talking about. Um, East Asians and I think like Malaysia or something and wherever certain people go where it was Indians in yep. Uganda I believe it was yeah um he and it's the, the middlemen that happens in every society 
like people who do really well economically, they tend to be be hated if it's really obvious. And ostracized. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are the bad people because they're good at what they do. They're good at making money. They're good at being successful. They're good at being entrepreneurs. They're good at being business owners. And they also have good upbringings. And therefore, because this reminds people of how, you know, I had absolutely terrible parents. Absolutely awful parents. I had an awful upbringing. I came from an awful environment. But I don't hate white people for that. I don't hate white people for that. There are so many things that make us as black people so successful. But instead of actually taking advantage of that and actually doing something and to make to make our world a better place, we're going to sit on our ass and say it's the white man's fault. I don't believe in that. and I don't subscribe in that. Just like I don't subscribe to white people blaming the Jews for for their incompetence, their cowardly actions, and also their treachery. I'm not going to do that. If I'm not going to let black people blame white people, I'm not going to let white people blame the Jews. That's how it's going to be with me. I don't do that sh- that, that, that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question for you. Why do you not fare... I don't know if I'm assuming this, but based on what our conversation, why do you not fear people using recent IQ data to basically be racist against black people or whatever people? People are going to be racist. They're going to find reasons to be racist because of, of ignorance. People who, and but also, hold on, hold on. Let me also say something this too. Um, I've, you have some people who are racist because racist things have been done to them. So a mm-hmm. victim will create another victim. You understand? Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't see racism as a as a as as being uh, evolved or created because of the race and IQ scientific data. I see racism being created because it has been indoctrinated in someone, or it has been taught to the, or it has been uh, indoctrinated to the in someone from childhood, or from their youth, <clears throat> or it has been taught to them. Or because of an experience that has happened. For example, uh, say for instance, a black woman is uh, was viciously attacked by a swarm of black men. Uh, excuse me, a white woman has been viciously attacked by a swarm of black men, and this is the this is the second incident where she has been attacked for being white. Well, if she becomes racist, I totally get it. I told not saying it is right because mm-hmm. she shouldn't group everyone. Uh, just like you shouldn't make one, you should not group all Jews as evil. You shouldn't group all white people as evil. You shouldn't group all black people as evil. But because of her experience, she's putting a hashtag all in her mentality and punishing all black people for the experiences of a few. But I, I don't think see she should relevant. Do that, and I get the, you know, like you said earlier. Uh, when we're hurt, like we, I don't remember the exact words, you do the same thing uh, to someone else. But I, I think people, like the morality issue there is too much for me to excuse that. Like I feel like even if someone has wronged you, and this, this has to do with my upbringing, which was very Christian, even though I don't consider myself that. Like you, that's no excuse for your own behavior. Like if something's wrong, it's wrong, even if you were hurt. Like you have to be the better person, I guess, and um, not be that way. I know you, that might take working through a lot. It takes working through a lot, but it's but, also take uh, you take uh, actually an emotional maturity. Yeah. So that's that. It does. It takes someone has to be emotional mature to be able to evolve that way, um, and they have to also be intelligent to know that. There is no such thing as hashtag all. You have to get rid of that. And this is this is what you and I are totally against is the hash. We constantly saying hashtag not all. We're talking mm-hmm. about the average or we're talking about a select few. Or we're talking about a group of people. Or the majority even, but it's yeah, still even not majority, everybody. But yeah. so everybody, everybody, mm-hmm. okay? It's not all white people are bad. And it's not all Jews are bad. It's not all blacks are bad. It's not all mm-hmm. Asians are, you know, I don't see nobody messing with the Asians like they all the other races, but except that Asians are actually affected by the affirmative action, but that's another story for another time. They're yeah, the most discriminated yeah. against in the affirmative mm-hmm. action. But the thing about it, is is that it, it's i hate the hashtag all you know fouls i hate that and well i'm i'm an individualist 
I really am. And it's not to ignore culture or not to take pride in like your roots. But I really think people should be treated as individuals, which is like the opposite of it's everything. It's going to be hard to do that in America because yeah. of identity politics. It's, I, yeah. I'm not even going <laughs> to. It's, it's basically impossible. I, I really like that you came from a different background. And I think my my subscribers are going to love you for that because you are not tainted. <laughs> but I mean, I'm getting the experience now. <laughs> but I can't erase. I just can't erase all of that. You know, it's 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 like my, my formative years. Yeah. You know, in a very strong way. So this has been great. We do you know we have talked for well over an hour. I think we talked for no. an hour. Yeah, hour and thirty <laughs> minutes, I think we have. I but, haven't paid attention. But uh gosh, see, this is and and I'm enjoying it though. This was <laughs> I, I did um, too. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I, I, uh, oh my God, I'm so happy about this conversation. I, and I, I hope people will take the time, even if they can't watch the video all the way through it at one sitting, just watch 10 minutes at a time. And then, you know, I, yeah, I think yeah. this is the, what we have talked about was so great <laughs> that I think this is just going to be a great video. So by the way, so, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have the link to your, uh, Twitter account and your YouTube channel, uh, anything else you want to plug uh, before we go? I think I would put my uh, art channel okay. also, but I, I'll have to sort of uh, give some instructions on that. That's not a problem. Um, um, yeah, and I also want to say too that um, I'm not. I'm trying to not just focus on racial issues. If people really like my content, which is fine, um, that's why I put it out there. Um, but I will also be focused on other things if they, you know, subscribe. Great. To and yeah. I totally, and I highly, every, I highly, highly suggest everybody, please go subscribe to Just Thinking Out Loud. I will have her uh, link in the description box. Um, so check out Desiree from Just Thinking Out Loud. And she's going to have uh, information there for you. Please subscribe Give give my sister some love, y'all. Give my sister Thank some you. love now. Y'all see how we we had a nice conversation. We didn't even agree on everything. We did it in the most respectful manner and things like that because we, we you have we we first of all I respect you so much and Stay and, here. and I I want you to I wanted people to see how two black women can have a conversation without cussing each other out, rolling the neck and snapping the fingers and stuff like that. I can't do that. I learned that in preschool. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't come out very often. <laughs> I, 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 I am so excited. So I, I want people to really uh, promote you and I want others to spread the word about you uh, so we can get your channel to grow and get you more exposure because you are very intelligent and I, I I'm gonna say this and this is gonna sound crazy from for me to say this but I do I rather people promote you than me when it comes to mainstream media you 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 are so you are the perfect image I think uh, aggressive women like me don't necessarily have to be in the public limelight. And I totally understand that that's my disadvantages. I have no in intentions on on changing that. But for you, it's safer. Do you, did that make sense? You, mm -hmm. you're, not, yeah, you're not intimidating. And therefore, but you're very intelligent to the point where you can actually have a conversation with someone and they are not offended by the truth bombs that you're dropping on them. Did that make sense? What I just said? That makes sense. But yeah. I do, I do like you. You have said things that I thought were offensive before, but I really like how like genuine you are. Like, yeah, I, I I'm like very that a offensive. Lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't apologize, and I don't lie about it. I'm like, yeah, I'm very offensive, and I, I think. Uh, but I do, I do know that I'm not trying to to be out there in the public eye. But we need women like you to be that. And I I, I humbly ask my subscribers to please promote uh, Just Thinking Out Loud. Please show us some love. You know, share her videos on uh, Facebook. Um, basically, you know, promote her. I I was so happy to actually drop your name. When was that? Was that back in May? Yeah, I, I saw people come and say Tree of Logic sent me here. Yeah, yeah, I, I dropped it. your yeah. name in May because I was excited to see mm. you. 
Uh, mm-hmm. I supported you, I have you, slowed sister. down a bit, but I'm definitely picking back up. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just, you know, they're patient. They're, they'll be there when you're ready and whenever you're, you know, you need some time off. They'll understand. This is YouTube, so that's that. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, all right, Tater. So um, uh, Desiree, don't hang up because I'm going to, um, okay. we're going to disconnect okay. from here. But I want to tell you all, uh, please check her out. Desiree from Just Thinking Out Loud. I'm going to have all her information in the description box. Please description box please share her videos please subscribe uh follow her on twitter show her some love and uh and protect her from those mean old trolls that come over <laughs> <laughs> this is tree from tree of logic.com i'll talk to you all next time Mwah. later taters <laughs> <laughs>